Hi, thanks for joining me for uh, another episode of It Happened in Coppell, uh, the show dedicated to Coppell stories and Coppell history. Um, the story that I want to tell today, I'm going to go a little off of my normal uh, routine. I don't normally read the stories, uh, but I did want to read this one directly. Uh, about a year ago, uh, Officer Steve Hayes was honored by the city and by the state for his service as a police officer. I started to write a story about it for the historical column and it turned out that it was also being featured as a regular news story that told much of the same material that I had covered. Uh, so I didn't get to use it, but I had a lot of great interview material that Officer Hayes had written to me uh, and I wanted to find a way to use it somehow. So with the 15th anniversary of 9-11, I wanted to do something today that could honor first responders, our police officers, and I thought what better way than to share this. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Steve Hayes, police officer, a detective now, I believe, in Coppell, uh, on March 31st in 1995, he was making a routine traffic stop. Uh, and as he was writing the ticket, uh, he was standing between his car and the person's car who he was writing the ticket for. A third car hit one of the cars, pinned him between it, uh, and he ended up losing his leg. And he wrote me a little bit about that. Uh, as well as some of the things that happened after that, the resiliency that he had, uh, and how he has turned that experience into a way to benefit other police officers. So he told me, Sean, I spent about three to four months in the hospital after the accident in the 500 block of South Denton Tap Road, just south of the post office, March 31st, 1995. After my release from Parkland, I was given an opportunity to come back to work. I was required to use a wheelchair for the first six months as I had extensive surgery to save my knee. It entailed moving my latimus dorsi muscle from my right back, shaping it down, and then attaching it to the back of my right leg to replace damaged tissue. This procedure was done in order that I could keep my knee joint. It takes much more energy to walk as an above-knee amputee versus a below-knee amputee, so keeping the knee was what a major focus of the hospital stay was. The surgery was an all-day procedure and involved some major reconstructive techniques, as well as multiple skin grafts, hence the wheelchair, in order for the transferred tissue to heal. I was sent to an office at the Coppell PD and the boss said, get to work. I had no idea what I was going to do, but soon discovered that I was responsible for hiring and training procedures for the department. During this time, I learned so much about aspects of police work I had never known before. I had always been a patrolman and had never worked, uh, and had worked on the motorcycle unit, but administrative jobs had not been part of my experiences. So this new work was fun and challenging. About two years or so into that, dispatch had a shortage of people and I was asked to fill in here and there. That's one of the most challenging jobs I've ever done. You're sitting in a room, many times, especially back in those days, all by yourself, with a whole city depending on you to get the call, send the right people, and know what to do when something bad happens. Six admin phone lines that citizens use to call in for all sorts of questions they have. Why is the power off at their house? How do I cook a duck for Easter? Why do I pay Carrollton Farmers Branch taxes but live in Coppell? Among a myriad of other questions that weren't police related. Then three 911 lines were all sorts of calls both non-emergency and emergencies are phoned in, panicked people screaming into the phone for help, and you have to be calm and decide what's going on and how to send help to them. On top of all of that, there were two firehouses and anywhere from three to six police officers on duty at any given time. All of these people were vying for radio time, as well as trying to get my attention. I was fortunate to have one of the best dispatchers I've ever known to teach me the art and craft of dispatching. Darewood Scott, a Coppell native and 25-plus year employee of the PD, took on the task of training me. I had a lot of cop experience, which in some ways helped, but being behind the radio is a nerve-wracking, thankless job. I worked in dispatch full-time for about two years or more, and then I was asked if I wanted to transition to the property room, as the person who worked in the property room was leaving. I took that challenge on, and it was quite the experience, too. As I worked in the property room and some in dispatch, I had direct contact with the Criminal Investigations Unit. In that capacity, I had the opportunity to go to multiple crime scenes and assist the detectives as they collected evidence. I would also assist with the investigations in some instances as needed. In 2001, I was offered a position in the Criminal Investigations Unit as a crime scene burglary theft detective, which I accepted. All this time, I had wondered if I could find some way to help injured officers. I had made feeble attempts at starting an organization to help injured officers, but none of them ever went anywhere. I hadn't a clue about how to start an organization or what to do, but on occasion I would speak with injured officers that other officers knew needed someone to talk to. Not very effective and scattered at best. In 2013, I was contacted by Maria Alvarado about starting an organization to help injured officers in Texas. Maria is a police survivor. Her son, Corporal Richard Barreda, was killed in the line of duty at DFW Airport in 1997. She said she wanted to work with officers who were injured. Maria assembled a group of injured officers from the greater DFW area, a sheriff, a chief of police, several supervisory police officers, 
police chaplains and clergy, as well as other various volunteers, some of whom are also police survivors, all in an effort to make a difference for injured officers in Texas. Thus, POAF, Peace Officers Angels Foundation, was born. Uh, and I was just uh, amazed listening to his story that for something so terrible to have happened, uh, he was so resilient and he kept coming back, kept serving our city uh, in any way that they would give him the opportunity. Uh, and then turned that into, turned his experience into a way to help other people. And I think in my experiences with members of the fire department, uh, members of the police department in Coppell, uh, they all go so far and above trying to help us, as well as other first responders that I've known in other places. I just wanted to share a little bit of his story in his words today on September 12th. Uh, in memory of what happened on September 11th, 15 years ago, as a way of honoring all of those who serve. So for September 12th, I'm Sean Jex. That's how it happened in Coppell.